That was a very nice introduction. It's a difficult one to live up to because uh, I don't know about authenticity. I mean, I mean, yesterday I faked an orgasm, admittedly just to impress the neighbours. But um, so uh, I mean, I've got to confess that I wasn't I wasn't always this kind of very uh, debonair, cool, sophisticated man of letters that you see before me, you see before you now. Um, I used to work, because uh, everybody's eating here, I, I, I'm actually going to lower the tone and put you off your food because I used to work in the catering industry. And I want to take you back to one summer in the 80s, which was probably about 82, 83. And I was quite marginal in the catering industry. I was um, what you would call uh, a kind of um, a fledgling short order cook. And uh, it came about, th this kind of job came about through, through strange kind of family circumstances. Um, I was having a bit of a rough time in life. I'd kind of, uh, my long-term girlfriend had packed me in. I was, uh, I was kind of, um, I was kind of couch surfing. I was, I was uh, taking a lot of drugs. I was a bit unkempt in my personal appearance and um, my personal hygiene wasn't all that it could have been. So I was perfectly cut out to work in catering in Britain in the 80s, basically. Um, and uh, what happened is that my, my cousin, uh, I better not mention his name if this is being filmed, actually. So um, he might be litigish, lit litigious. Uh, my cousin had said to me, he had this, he had this burger van, which, uh, was situated on an industrial estate on the west side of Edinburgh called Site Hill. And what he would do is he would provide all these kind of bacon rolls and hamburger rolls for all the, the working guys and, and women on the site, you know, people that worked in the biscuit factory or the, all these light engineering factories. They would come out in their overalls. They would devour these terrible kind of um, rolls that he made. and. Um, and then, uh, you know, everybody would go back and there was, a, there was a morning rush and a lunchtime rush and that was it. So the hours appealed to me. Um, not the getting up early, but the rest of it, but the knocking off early appealed to me. And he said to me, he was mixed up with some dodgy characters and he had to kind of be away, he had to go away for a while. And he said to me, I want you to look after the burger van while I'm gone. And I thought, well... I was touched by his trust, you know, I really was touched by it that I could make a go of this business, I could operate this business uh, in his absence. And um, kind of nobody else took, was, taking, was kind of rooting for me then, so I thought, this is good, you know. Uh, so I took over and I, I, I went into, I saw the burger van and it was this, um, it was basically just this kind of brown, burnt out looking thing. And on the inside, the walls were kind of heavy with grease and it was kind of the floor of this, this old red tile stuff that had been ripped up and it was absolutely filthy. And it suited me because I was filthy as well, you know, I had all these, I had all these big spots, kind of big boils on my face. Um, and I was kind of twitching a lot, you know, I've been taking a lot of drugs and all that and I was kind of sort of twitching and scratching at myself all the time. And had a lot of had long fingernails with a lot of dirt under the fingernails. Um, but he obviously thought, it's the workies up in the industrial estate. They're not going to bother. They'll just eat, the, they'll eat all the stuff that he kind of uh, he makes, you know. So what I would do is um, I'd be sitting there kind of in my greasy um, Iron Maiden T-shirt, you know, sort of uh, big spots in my face, dirt under my fingernails. And um, the guys would come along and uh, they would say, Give me, uh, give me a, a, a bacon roll, you know. So I would stick, it, I would stick at the bacon on this horrible, greasy hot plate with the fat never drained away from. <laughs> then I would kind of um, get a big bag of those horrible stale rolls that we used to get from the bakery the night before, and uh, I'd take them, spread a bit of margarine on them, grab the bacon, put it on there, and just stick it in their hand. And of course, the guys never even noticed. They just walked away and you know paid the money and walked away. And it was all going well until one day somebody asked me for a hamburger roll and I did this thing and I kind of handed it over. I didn't look to see who it was. And it was this horrible little bastard in a suit 
glasses, small. He just looked like a, an official of Edinburgh District Council. <laughs> and I thought, my God, this guy has got to be from the Environmental Health Department, <laughs> from the Food Inspectorate. And of course, he flashes me his card and he goes, this place is an absolute disgrace. <laughs> you are an absolute disgrace. <laughs> so this is the most vile, infested piece of nonsense that I've ever seen. And if you don't clean this up in two weeks, your license is gone. So I tried to get a hold of my cousin. And this, is, this is the 80s, the days before mobile phones. He had left a number. He said, oh, I phoned up. He said, no, he's not there anymore. Uh, I've got no forwarding contact number for him. I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to get this sorted out? So I called in a few favors from friends in the building trade. And um, they were great. And, you know, I, I, we worked hard to clean the place out. And what I did is I, I, got, um, I got a chance to get this kind of uh, flame grill thing. And I used it and I replaced that kind of... Uh, horrible kind of hot slate that we were cooking, uh, cooking everything on. And uh, I had a bath, I cut my nails, uh, <laughs> I cut my hair. I had hair back then, it was the 80s. Um, I, uh, and what, you know, and, and we, we tiled the inside of, the, we cleaned it all out, we tiled the inside of the, the place, nice white tiles, got a microwave, um, we kind of painted it on the outside. Uh, nice little paintings of burgers and stuff like that. And we changed our suppliers. Instead of these horrible kind of stale buns, we got those nice rolls, kind of whole wheat rolls from the bakery. We got nice pieces of bacon. We got burgers that were real meat instead of chemical sludge kind of congealed together. Uh, kind of nice grated cheese and, um, you know, sort of salad accompaniments. And what I also did, as well as cleaning myself up, I got a lot of a chef's uniform with the hat and the whites. And I thought, this is going to make, this is going to really cut a dash with the guys on the building site, the, the industrial estate. They're going to think, this guy's looking after us. And the council guy is going to absolutely, he's going to go crazy. He's going to love this. So the only thing that kind of, uh, there's one thing that happened that derailed me, that, um, I was, kind of, I was still quite kind of sort of marginal and down and wasn't really looking after myself. And I had unprotected sex with this woman. Um, as you did in the 80s, you never had protected sex back then. But I got a, I got a sexually transmitted disease and uh, I had a lot of discharge. <laughs> um, and I went to the, I held off. I held off going to War, War 45 in the Western General was the venereal disease clinic. And as I'd had VD before, I thought, I'm not going to go back there because instead of giving you the course, of, they give you the course of penicillin the first time. But because it's Scotland, and I believe this, that it's a wire brush and dental treatment the second time. <laughs> and of course, this was nonsense. This, was just, this is just to scare you into not going back. But uh, I actually believed this, so it took me a while before I, I realized that this was an urban myth and I could actually go back and get another course of penicillin. But, um, so I had to kind of watch what I was doing hygiene-wise. And, you know, but I had, you know, I, I washed and I bathed and I had my, my white on and, uh, you know, I had my new, my beautiful new burger van. It was all fantastic. And of course, the guys in the industrial estate, they never noticed a single thing. They made, you know, they didn't you know, say, what you, what you dressed like, a, a fucking poof in white's fur, you know? That was the only feedback that I kind of got. <laughs> but of course, along comes the environmental health guy. And he's looking at everything, he goes, I can't believe this. I can't believe this amazing turnaround you've done. This is fantastic. It's, look at this. It's a beautiful day. The sun's in the sky. A wonderful summer's day. And there's this amazing burger van. It gleams in the distance. And the, when you go up to inside here, all these white tiles and these scrub stainless steel tops and this, gr this new grill you have and the microwave. And you've got this beautiful, uh, all these beautiful accompaniments. You've got to give me one of your burgers. So 
What I did is I prepared the burger, I had these tongs, and I, I wouldn't touch anything with my hands, I had these tongs, and I grabbed the burger with these tongs, and I put it on the hot plate, cooked it, to, uh, the grill turned it with the tongs, stuck it in this, poly, this polystyrene um, styrofoam carton that we had, uh, put in the lettuce, the tomato, and the accompaniments, into this kind of this lovely fresh sort of whole wheat uh, bun, the onions, the, there's all the mustard and ketchup that he wants. So he's helping himself, and everything was done by these tongs. Never touched a single thing. So he said to me, "This is absolutely amazing." He's taking a bite and he's going, "This is the best burger I've ever had. It tastes so good." And he says, "Tell me, you've done all this stuff." I understand it all, but there's a, there's a string that comes out of the bottom of your chef's overalls. What is a string for? And I thought, God, I was hoping he wouldn't notice that fucking string. And I said, well, look, I've had a bit of a, an incident. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's just say that I don't want to be touching my penis when I'm handling food. And he goes, well, fair enough. So what have you, how, how do you get over that? And he said, well, I've tied a string to the end of my penis. So whenever I need to go for a piss, all I do is I just pull the string, comes out, I do a piss. And he goes, that's absolutely magnificent. That is just so hygienic. It's a more... It's the most that you, know, you don't even need to touch your genitals. And he goes, that's fantastic. He goes, how would you get them back in? I said, well, I just use these tongs. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening, folks. Cheers. <laughs>